next one you see the third method here we have for the concentration of ores uh this we call it as froth flotation we also call it as oil flotation okay right down to this it is used for the separation of separation of sulfide ore sulfide ore what we do in this method we crush the ore we'll take crushed ore mixed with water and forms a slurry right crushed ore we mix water into it forms slurry we also add a bit of oil into it just point wise write down oil adds to the slurry adds to the slurry which acts as a, which acts as the frothing agent frothing agent which reduces surface surface tension which reduces surface tension okay so this property you must remember purpose of oil is to you reduce surface tension okay now in the next step what we do air is bubbled bubbled through the through the mixture which acts as an agitator which acts as an agitator <clears throat> and creates creates froth and finally finally ore starts floating floating with the froth and impurities impurities settle down this is how we separate impurities and ores <clears throat> few things which are important here that you write down two three points we have note down these points reagents like aniline cresol are used to stabilize the froth this you have to memorize the froth first point is this 
second point here we also use sodium ethyl xanthate sodium ethyl xanthate as a collector of of sulfide ore important as a collector of sulfide ore sodium ethyl xanthate the structure you see ch3 ch2 ethyl o c double bond s single bond s minus and na plus this is sodium ethyl xanthate this part when you put this into the solution this part is hydrophobic part hydrophobic part and it is out of the water out of the water or slurry whatever we have it is out of that uh, water this part is c double bond s s minus this part is hydrophilic into the water in water right so this part is adsorbed so adsorption takes place here okay done all of you okay see collector is something which collects sulfide ore as the name suggests you see this helps the this actually trap the sulfide ores with it see what i wrote here sodium ethyl xanthate as a collector of sulfide ores so this part actually this part into the water out of the water hydrophobic part into the water a slurry that you have so this part traps the sulfide ore present into that slurry and we can separate it easily so collector is used to trap the sulfide ores okay now you see like i said this method is useful for the for the sulfide ores okay we can also use this method for non sulfide ores but for that we need we, we need to use some kind of activators okay so with the help of activator we can use this method for non sulfide ores also okay so write down this point next we can also use we can also use some activators some activators which improves the improves the floating characteristics which improves the floating characteristics of ores of ore and this way we can use this method this method
method for non sulfide ores right so the most important activators we have here is anglesite anglesite which is pb so for you must remember this right the particles the particles or molecules which reduces the the floating characteristics floating characteristics of ore particle are known as depressant they can ask you this definition also depressant example we have nacn kcn etc right so this is the three method we use for the concentration of ores okay so basically we have ores and the concentration of ores we call it as concentrated ores got it three methods we have discussed for the concentration of ores done this one let me know if you have done it okay next you see the second method we have ores and then we get concentrated ores next one is the conversion of of concentrated ore into its oxide right so we'll get oxidized oxide and then we'll reduce it to get the metal that's what the um, process is the different method we use here to get the oxide of this uh, metal the first method we have here is calcination like i said we use calcination calcination in this the concentrated ore concentrated ore is heated to a high temperature this should be less than the fusion temperature of the metal high temperature but less than the fusion temperature in absence of air this is what we do and in this method what happens the impurity is like impurities like 
सल्फर आर्सेनिक एस बी आर रिमूव्ड इन द फॉर्म ऑफ देयर वेपर okay this is first method that we can use the second method we have is roasting in this also it is the same thing right heated at high temperature less than the temperature at a uh, fuel temperature but in presence of air so roasting is what the concentrated ore is heated to high temperature but less than the fusion temperature in presence of air in presence of air by this method right so in presence of air if you heat will get oxides of metals because oxygen is present in air so we'll get oxides of metal in this uh, method right roasting we we'll get oxides of metal in this now when you get oxides of metal here right the other process that we use here after this concentrated or into its oxides we do the reduction of the uh, oxides ores that we get here so third method is reduction reduction process so we have metal oxides and when we reduce this we'll get metal reduction processes okay so in reduction process what we do we have one method and we call it as carbon reduction okay so in carbon reduction what happens you see here this is used for the extraction of commercial extraction actually the extraction of iron tin zinc and lead extraction of iron tin zinc or lead this process we also call it as smelting also known as smelting the carbon reduction method and this does not always require reduction right a smelting process does not always require require a reduction like in extraction of copper first of all you write it down and then we'll move on all of you copy it down and let me know once you are done like you see like i said smelting does not always require reduction 
So in extraction of copper, in extraction of copper, Cu, smelting does not require a reduction of ore. But in general, reduction takes place. And how do we write down the, uh, like the overall reaction, general reaction if I write down, the calcinated ore we take from the second step, calcinated ore. And in this calcinated ore, we'll use some reducing agent, which is generally a coke powder. It is a reducing agent. In this, we add some flux into it. Now, what is flux? Flux is the impurity we add into it to remove the other impurity. To remove the other impurity. Okay. And in this, we get molten metal and slag. This is what we get. To use this flux, two things we need to take care of. And what is that? If impurity If impurity present in ore is acidic, acidic impurity we have, for example, SiO3, then the flux, flux must be basic in nature. If impurity is acidic, flux must be basic in nature. Some basic nature flux we can use CaO, MnO, all these oxides we can use as a flux when the impurity is acidic. Reverse is also true. If impurity is is basic, for example, MnO, FeO, these kind of impurities we have, then flux must be acidic. That is P2O5. SiO2. All these we can use. This method or this process is applicable for oxide ores. Sulfide ores, carbonate and sulfate ores. Just a second, copy it down. 